Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the immune system, phagocytosis, antibody production, antitoxin production, and finally a summary. Your immune system is extremely important in keeping you healthy. This is because there are times when the body's non-specific defense mechanisms are not enough to stop pathogens from entering the body. So non-specific defense mechanisms include things such as your skin and your hair. Sometimes pathogens can bypass these mechanisms. So in this case, the pathogen has entered the body. Now the immune system gets activated to try and destroy the pathogens that's made it through. So the immune system is actually better than the non-specific defense mechanisms at killing or defending against pathogens. I'll be talking about the immune system in this video. So what's in the immune system? Well, white blood cells are a vital part of the immune system because they help defend against pathogens. So when they come across an invading pathogen, they can respond in different ways. This leads to destruction of the pathogen, and this stops you from getting ill. White blood cells are carried in the blood where they patrol for pathogens. They are able to identify pathogens from the other molecules in the body. If they detect the presence of a pathogen, they can respond in different ways. So one way is phagocytosis and another is producing antibodies. Both of those ways lead to destruction of the pathogen, and I'll discuss these ways in this video. If white blood cells detect pathogens, one way of response is phagocytosis. Some types of white blood cells called phagocytes can engulf pathogens and then digest them. This is called phagocytosis. So these are the phagocytes or white blood cells. And this is a pathogen. As you can see here, the phagocyte has engulfed the pathogen. Enzymes and toxins can digest the pathogen. Phagocytosis is actually a non-specific response. For example, a white blood cell can engulf any pathogen. So this pathogen here could be a bacteria, viruses, fungi or protists. It can be anything or anything that the body recognises as a pathogen. I'm going to discuss another way the immune system can react to pathogens, in this case, antibody production. Pathogens actually have unique marker proteins called antigens on their cell surface. So the pink circle here is a pathogen, and on its surface it has antigens, and these are proteins. As you can see, antigens all look different, they're unique to a pathogen. The body uses these unique marker antigens to recognise the pathogens as foreign. This is by cells of the immune system. This leads to a response that's specific to that pathogen. So this is a white blood cell. This white blood cell may come across a pathogen and due to its antigens, it may recognise this pathogen as foreign. This leads to a response, for example, phagocytosis or antibody production. The white blood cell may also come across these group of cells here. These cells are from your own body, they're from yourself. The white blood cell recognises this and there is no response. Sometimes things can go wrong and your white blood cells can recognise the cells in your body as foreign and start attacking them. This can lead to conditions such as type 1 diabetes. So antigens on the surface of pathogens cause types of white blood cells called B lymphocytes to produce proteins called antibodies. So this is a B lymphocyte, and these are the antibodies it produces. It's easy to get confused between antibodies and antigens. One way to remember it is that antigens are in pathogens, and that antibodies are produced by the body. So these antibodies bind or lock onto pathogens. This is so they can be found and destroyed by other white blood cells. So antibodies can help stick pathogens together. They can also make it easier to find and for the body to carry out processes like phagocytosis, which we saw before. There are actually several different types of antibodies. Each binds only to one type of antigen, therefore to one type of pathogen. So this antibody will only bind specifically to this antigen here. And antibodies always look like this Y shape here. Therefore, this antibody binds to this pathogen. So you need this antibody for this antigen and this pathogen. And you need another one for this antibody 
and this pathogen. There is a huge number of different antigens possible. This means that your body has to produce a huge variety of antibodies. A single type of B lymphocyte or white blood cell only produces one type of antibody. For example, if these pathogens invade and they enter the body, this pathogen will only cause this specific B lymphocyte to produce specific antibodies to the pathogen. These antibodies then bind to the pathogen and no other B lymphocytes produce the right antibodies for the pathogen. If this pathogen enters the body, this B lymphocyte produces the right and specific antibodies for this pathogen so it can bind to it and destroy it. The B lymphocytes to the left and the right don't produce antibodies. If this pathogen enters the body, this B lymphocyte produces the antibody specific to the pathogen. So the antibodies bind to the pathogen and this pathogen is destroyed. In this case, the first B lymphocytes won't be activated to produce antibodies as they're not specific to the antigen on the pathogen. This means the response, the antibodies produced, is specific to the particular type of invading cell. Another thing that white blood cells can do to prevent disease is to produce antitoxins. So bacteria that enter your body can produce toxins and these can harm the body. White blood cells can produce antitoxins and these neutralize the toxins produced by bacteria. Remember, antitoxins are different to antibodies as they don't bind to the antigens on the surface of pathogens. Instead, antitoxins react with the products produced by bacteria which are toxic, and these are toxins. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.